Hello, this is Linda Como and welcome again to the conversations about the upcoming conference for 2015, the North American Systemic Constellations Conference. And uh, today my guest is Jane Peterson, who is uh, the originator of the conferences, as well as giving a talk. And her talk is Advisor to the King and Mama's Rules, Constellations in Organizations. But before we talk about your workshop, Jane, welcome. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about how you're feeling about the 10th anniversary of the conference. You must be so excited. Well, we did the first conference in 2005, um, which was quite a risk. No one had done it before, so we just were, we felt very blessed that we broke even and we were okay. <laughs> um, and we had 200 people come from all over. Uh, and it was really, that that conference, we were really focused on building community. Um, and often, they're in face-to-face, -face, you know, we hadn't met each other. So our, our goal was really to see if it was possible to create a sense of ourselves as um, United States and North American uh, facilitator. And um, it was a really lovely conference. It was pretty special. We, I had the, when Guntar Weber is actually the kind of instigator behind this, um, I was at a conference in Cologne, Germany, and he said, you know, she, you, you know if you've met Guntar, you know how it's sort of an unstoppable force. And he said, you should do the conference. And so I ended up doing that. And it was really quite, quite lovely. I had a vision. It just all unfolded. So... I'm really delighted that it's continued. I'm really delighted to see this group in particular uh, have a focus on community, um, that it's actually a community of practitioners that are organizing the conference is a very exciting thing. Yes, I'm very excited. Super, super. So before we get into your talk, uh, one of the questions the delegates are asking through my Facebook page um, regarding the conference is mm -hmm. how do you describe constellations to a stranger? Well, um, the first thing I would say is, why are you describing constellations to a stranger? <laughs> it may not be necessary. Uh, often people are asking the question, what do you do? So they want to know what you do. They wanna, they're asking a what question. And if you start to whip, if you go about constellation work and start to describe it, you're answering a how question. The constellations are how you do what you do. But they really are asking a different question. They want to know what is it that you do? What kinds of, um, if you're a healer, what kind of healing do you do? If you're, um, if what you do, what, what kind of solutions do you provide? What kind of services do you provide for people? If you're um, a counselor working with families, you might instead say, I really hope families in a very effective way resolve uh, problems within, within, you know, across generations in, this, in families. Or you might say, I work with parents and, t and kids who are in difficulty, and I help them find ways to resolve those difficulties and understand each other better. And then if they say, wow, well, how do you do that? Now you have the how question. <laughs> but, you know, then you can say, well, I have a very effective way of helping people connect what they feel uh, with what their mind can know and understand and relate to. And that's really in a very simple way what we do. People always have a gut feeling. They have a heart and something's off, that's what leads them to come in and seek help. And they've struggled with something in their lives, they know something's off and they can't put their hands around it. Because if they could solve it, they, you know, if they could think it through and solve it, they would solve it. Right. So they're coming to us because they can't. So very often if we can just give a very simple way of explaining what is going to solve the problem that they're interested in, that's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, think about, I was just saying to you, Linda, you know, think about that first workshop that got you, most of you, most of us, there's one workshop, somebody has a catchy title, it's a topic that we have a lot of issues around, they look trustworthy, we like their picture, you know, and uh, it sounds interesting, and we go. And that's what's needed to get people in the door. They have to decide, is it something personal and painful? The most important thing for them is, do I trust you? Am I safe with you? If you can create a foreign relationship with them, honestly, people will allow you to do all kinds of crazy things. Otherwise, you wouldn't have things like rope courses and, 
you know, where people allow you to let them hang, you know, hang from ropes and do things with, you know, so we really have to trust the other person. And then if we do, um, the, you don't have to explain all that. You have to do a lot of hand -holding. And people understand if they feel something that they can't get their hands on it, um, they can't understand it, they've struggled with it. This is a way of making that feeling visible. This is a way of letting that part of yourself really through somebody holding the space and representing that talk, share what it knows. Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you, Jane. That is excellent points. In fact, I think I was sharing with you earlier, Linda, I did a workshop in uh, Copenhagen uh, at the big conference there. I did a little workshop because this is such a common question. How do I explain constellation? And the focus is on the wrong place. In that workshop, what I had people do was set up uh, three people. I had them set up uh, themselves as the, you know, facilitator. Um, I had them set up the client, and I had them set up a constellation. Work. And I actually had people map that out for me, so I had all this little data set of. But so many of them had constellation work in front of them or between them and the client. And the client wants to know you. They want to know are you a safe person for me? And the constellation work should be, you know, accompanying you. <laughs> but it's just one of your tools. Most of us have many tools. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's one of those pieces where less is, is better. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome advice. Okay, let's talk about your talk. Advisor to the King and Mama's Rules, Constellations in Organizations. I'm dying to hear what your talk's about. Well, there's, a, there's two things. I had a, a workshop in uh, Hangzhou, China. It was one of those workshops that was a learning experience for me. I had, there was actually four couples that had hired me, but nobody somehow managed to explain that to me. And there were 25 people in the room. It was a group of friends and family. And uh, in that workshop, I had a really uh, clear uh, shall I say, I was educated, <laughs> had an opportunity to learn, to make very fine distinctions between family, the orders of love and family, and the orders of relationship and organization. And they are not the same. In a family, every member has the same right to belong. It's a biological system. You are born into it. In an organization, that is a human-made system. It's a socially constructed system. Additional, if you don't serve the need of the, the purpose of the organization, then you really do not belong to that. So that's just an example. That the orders of love in families and the orders of relationship in organizations are different because those entities serve different purposes. And when we try to apply, whether consciously or unconsciously, the family rules in the organizational context, it gets very messy. Or vice versa. So if you are if you are a copreneur like you and your husband might run a business together, um, and you're you want to talk about taxes right now, but your husband wants to talk about a romantic you're out for dinner, he wants to have a romantic time, you know, there's it's like a really confusing moment. Like which which you are you talking from? Your business you or your personal you? So being able to sort these cleanly is a really important thing. And if, especially when our leadership does not have these things sorted well, then it becomes a challenge. And most of us will have clients come in to our practice, whether if it's an open workshop and people can bring any kind of issue. They will come in um, embedded in these organizations that are not functioning in very clean or healthy ways. So you may have a uh, an organization, for instance, that um, is owned by a couple, and the the mom in the couple <clears throat> refers to us as one big happy family, and uh, everyone knows that uh, mom is the one that makes the final decision on anything. Um, and you may have a hundred people in the in the organization, and this gets a bit tricky, especially if it's a private company. What do you do? So that's a case where you, if you're working inside that company, you have to understand that you're not working under the orders of relationship. You're working under this weird sort of hybrid where it's mama's rules. 
<laughs> and if you don't get on the good side of mama and you want to be in that company and you want to succeed, you're going to have trouble. So that's a, those are really tricky and complex places for people to negotiate because organizations have a way of, you know, of being fair. They need to be fair. People need to be able to leave. Uh, because sometimes our purposes align with the organization in terms of our lives, and sometimes they don't, and we need to leave and go on to other things, and that's appropriate in an organization. In a family, you can never leave. <laughs> so it's really very challenging for people, or if they, if they find themselves in a position where uh, they're the advisor to the king. You know, there's a king instead of mom at this time, you know, some, and this is not uncommon that there's a there's somebody who owns or it's a blended family business and organizational business. You know, it's like we have some professional man managers and some family members. Um, these are very common. Family-owned businesses are the kind of engine of commerce um, in many countries, most countries of the world. There's a lot of family-owned business. And a lot of you will either have people from the family-owned business coming in to see you with issues within the family or within the business or within the mix between, or you'll have people coming who are working in these places and are trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And even in our public institutions, uh, we can have fiefdoms. I have a client recently who was working for a public agency funded by taxpayers, and there was definitely a little kingdom in there that this fellow had created, and he was trying to play by the rules and not by the king's rules, um, and it cost her her job. So, you know, it's serious stuff. Um, so um, Lisa Murray Main and I are kind of taking a playful way of approaching this to help uh, people who are mostly perhaps trained in family constellations understand how to help their clients who come in with these kinds of issues. And they will. People, if you have an open workshop, they will. And if you don't know the, how to make those distinctions and help your client understand what they can and what they cannot do inside these social structures, um, can it help them? So we want to give people who come to our workshop the tools to be able to make those distinctions and to really help their clients out. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, big distinction. And I talked to another constellator once and she asked me some advice. She wanted to do some work. And um, I was trying to give her some guidance because my certification is in organizational mm -hmm. constellations. And she had a tough time seeing the difference. And um, I don't know uh, what happened. Yeah, this, this group in Angela where I had friends and groups with family and they were all two couples in business with each other. It was so messy that I finally, in desperation, as I was trying to sort through this, you know, uh, I finally went to the whiteboard and started, you know, saying this is this and that is not it, this is this and that is that and this is what's going on and this is why we're having problems sometimes in the middle and you know, so that really was, uh, it forced me to get really crystal clear and simple about what the differences were so that I could help this group out. Yes. Um, because they had so many entangled uh, relationships with each other. So I'm, I'm forever indebted to my friend, Hang Zhao, who put me in this very awkward situation of thinking I had a public workshop and then finding out two couples expected me to work with them for four days. <laughs> it would have been so proud. <laughs> You know, and then this whole thing about them, they, they were, it was such a mess. It was a lovely mess. <laughs> but it taught me so much because I had to clarity out and really put it in simple language. I was being interpreted through into Mandarin the whole time, so I had to get in such a very simple, crystal clear language. And so I'm really grateful. That's where my little chart came from. <laughs> sort of desperation. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that, that is, uh, oh, I'm so excited to meet you. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, Jane's talk is Advisor to the King and Mama's Rules, Constellations and Organizations. And the date is Saturday the 14th in the afternoon. And um, I can't wait to meet you in person, Jane. Thank Love you that. for your time today. And uh, we'll look forward to meeting you at the conference. 
Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Uh-huh.